We bring in Anthony Chan, who uh, uh, joins us to talk about the markets. The Dow, as you can see, still up, but the Nasdaq staying stubbornly lower, just marginally. Anthony, uh, I want to know what impact do you think the rising Omicron variant will have on inflation, if any? I think that eventually it will have a dampening effect uh, on inflation. And the reason for that is what happens when you increase the amount of traffic in the United States, double or triple it, you're going to have more accidents. Mm. But if you build better seat belts, uh, then those accidents are less serious and perhaps less death. And right now, financial markets, uh, they're not in support of the vaccine or against the vaccine. They want to keep people safe. They want to keep them from getting less sick and they want to keep less people from dying. Because remember, we have a shortage of labor, and when people die or get sick, that reduces the labor force. In the case of death, it reduces the labor force permanently. And today, we have better seatbelts. Uh, what we have is the vaccine, and we have the antivirals, so we have the treatments, and then we have the preventive. And so there is something for everyone, a very political uh, uh, sort of stripe. And that is what the financial markets are saying, that somehow, despite the Omicron virus uh, now reaching highest records, uh, the economy is going to be more resilient, and the stock market is reflecting what they believe is going to happen in the economy. Yeah, we thought that was going to be the case, though, Anthony, in uh, this year, that we started to gain momentum, and for whatever reason, we've still been kind of, you know, stuttering out of the, uh, the, uh, out of the block, so to speak. And there are fears that that could be the case again for uh, next year, 2022, that we just can't seem to get rid of this COVID in the sense that we can fully reopen the economy and be, you know, uh, operating on all engines. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, the way I would respond is that if you go back to March, what we were doing was we were shutting down the productive mm. capacity of the economy and we were boosting aggregate mm -hmm. demand with stimulus. What are we doing today? We're doing everything possible to keep the economy running. We are shortening the amount of time that you stay home even after you test positive, which means keep people working mm -hmm. a lot longer. And we're reducing stimulus. We're talking about packages that will spend over 10 years what was spent in less than six months. So clearly, aggregate demand is being supported a lot less. And to the extent that this virus is more vir virulent and that it spreads quicker and burns out a lot quicker, that means that when things start looking better, there'll be more downward pressure on the Build Back uh, uh, Better America program, which means even less stimulus. All that will reduce future inflationary pressures. And again, we don't have an aggregate demand problem. In fact, these, right. the uh, Atlanta Fed uh, GDP is forecasting 7.6 growth uh, percent growth in the fourth quarter. What we have is an aggregate supply. Wow. So we're doing everything to boost aggregate supply, and we're doing less to boost aggregate demand. Net, net, once we get through this, second half of next year, I'm not saying inflation goes away, but it certainly right. moves closer to a peak and starts to head down much lower. I love the optimism, and I look forward to next year. Anthony Chan, thank you so much for your comments.